The Trumpet Daily Update from Jerusalem. Hello again, this is Stephen Flurry reporting from Jerusalem. This week in Tehran, representatives from nearly 100 nations have gathered for the 16th Non-Aligned Movement, also called the NAM Conference. It's a summit that would ordinarily fly under the radar, but its location is garnering far more attention on the international scene than the movement itself. That's because over 50 heads of state will be in Iran for the conference, including 27 presidents, seven prime ministers, and two kings. The summit's successful turnout marks a victory, a tremendous victory for Iran, a nation that is actually prospering on the international scene despite Western efforts to isolate the Islamic State. Iranian Defense Minister Ahmed Vahidi said the conference demonstrates the thriving power of the Islamic Iran. Surely holding the summit in Iran can give more power to the Islamic Republic ruling system and create abundant opportunities in the international arena, he said. Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salihi opened the conference with an appeal for solidarity against Western sanctions. In the same speech, according to Fars News Agency, he lambasted Israel, saying the tragedy of Palestine was the root cause of conflicts in the region. An exhibit at the entrance of the conference displayed pictures detailing the history of terrorism against Iran, titled Iran Victim of Terrorism. What remained of three cars belonging to three Iranian scientists that were recently bombed were also on display. Iran has accused the United States and Israel as being responsible for those deaths. Now it's within this atmosphere of bias and blatant anti-Semitism that, not surprisingly for many, the United Nations is right there participating in yet another victory for Iran. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon agreed to attend the summit despite strong protests from Israel. Ban Ki-moon's insistence on attending the summit is baffling, particularly after he was recently informed that Iran does not plan to cooperate with the UN nuclear agency's inspectors, Ynet News reported today. Moreover, one of Ban's aides has complained that Iran is continuing to transfer weapons and equipment to Syrian forces loyal to President Assad, and Lebanon has told the UN that Iran is trying to ignite a civil war in the country. Now, as we've also reported at thetrumpet.com just last week, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is also attending the conference. Morsi will be among the heads of state invited to tour Iran's nuclear facilities during the conference. Now, just think about that for a moment. Here we have an Egyptian president who's touring Iran's nuclear facilities. Iran and Egypt can switch on their joint activities in the nuclear field, and Iran is ready to transfer its know-how and experience to Egypt. Now, it's also worth noting that during his stay in Tehran, Morsi will travel through Tehran's Islambouli Square, which is named in honor of the radical Islamist who assassinated former Egyptian president Anwar Sadat. Now, for much more on the dangerous alliance forming between Iran and Egypt, read When Push Comes to Shove, and also the shockingly rapid radicalization of Egypt, both of them at thetrumpet.com. This is Stephen Flurry reporting from Jerusalem.